Look at the people on either side of you and um, uh, think about who they are. Uh, it's quite likely that you'll know one or two of them and then there'll be three or four you don't. But that's, uh, a, that's a space and it's the space that makes up the world. I came here about half an hour ago and you can tell, you can walk into this building and you can tell straight away um, what an extraordinarily optimistic um, and a word that's a little bit difficult, you never find in a prospectus, what a caring place this is. I, on the whole, I wouldn't advise that you write outside educational institutions, we care. But there's a, another verb you can use in English, which is terrific, which is uh, we mind. And I walked up the stairs and I thought, this is one of those places where people mind. Um, there's something about, I mean, it's probably something you can smell. It's a kind of uh, condition of n not just about we're having a party and it's a, some kind of christening or uh, ritual activity, that there's something else that's going on that the people next to you share with you. Um, that's very, very difficult to construct. It's very hard to make. Um, it's a condition of trust and it takes a lot of time and an exceptional amount of goodwill and the goodwill has to be in a constant state, one of those words I find hard to say, of reciprocity. And if you get it, it's sort of nuclear and it takes, well it takes, it takes somebody to lead but it also takes lots of other people to um, behave like cicadas. You know, that you need some constant state of productive friction amongst people. And once you've got that, you have something very, very special. And that's a very long way away from going, I'm an artist. It's not that um, hyper-individuated, uh, over-privatized, uh, slightly foolish, um, precious space. It's something about the way that people are quite infectious and that you can witness things. I, I think at least, but probably 70% of learning anything is just witnessing it. It's completely passive. You don't even know you've done it. And I thought it was wonderful to stand here 10 minutes ago and realize I was taking lessons in Polish grace. Um, because 40 years ago, no one could spell Poland. Um, no one had met anyone from Poland. Certainly didn't meet them in England. And that makes me incredibly, um, makes me very hopeful because, well, it's funny because some people are nodding, so they, they um, by definition, they have to be old enough to have some kind of comprehension of this thing that English people can't pronounce, which is spelled E-U-R-O-P-E, -E, um, which is actually, as described by Eric Hobsbawm, it's the um, western um, peninsula of this very big thing called Asia and we call it Europe, um, and we're part of that, but in a rather strange way, because we live on this extremely argumentative, but not, bit of real estate with a bit of water around it. And I think, I think it's true that Brooks is as far as you can get from the sea. I think it's the statutory 70 mile trip that is the max. So I suppose, what I'm trying to say is that, that doing something like this is it's just cultural. It, I think what Alison said about worth and value and quality and incredibly eloquently is actually not very different from just valuing the person next to you, but knowing that they do that 
to the next person, they do that to the next person, and that then strangely is something we call culture. So going somewhere where you make culture, a, a kind of um, culture mill, or a, you know, it's a, bit, it's a little bit Duchampian, but some kind of grinding machine is always thrilling. <clears throat> I don't get as emotional as Howard Hodgkin, but I do get emotional. Um, and I do find it really thrilling to be with lots of people who've... I just met somebody who said, well, I kind of liked making three-dimensional things, so I made more of them, I paraphrase. But that's the, that happens in an art school. That's, you, it's something to do with finding out um, how you belong to yourself, which is not a commodity, but if you um, if you can belong to yourself, you frankly are as privileged as you can be. So I want to congratulate you all on evidently belonging to yourselves and being in the company of exceptional people, a word that's a bit dodgy in Oxford, but who are genuinely, another one, collegial, um, which is a, a great feat. So um, learn Polish, dress up, uh, be collegial, um, and be, be very, very, very proud. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here this evening, and I know it was a, a real jaunt, um, and uh, it was it was uh, so thrilling to hear that you were able to come this evening. So thank you. I know it means a lot to students, doesn't it, students? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Very, very. Sorry, we. You, don't <laughs> it's such a simple thing. I mean, the, my joke about the Polish grace was it's it's really simple. If some if you ask somebody something nicely, they mostly do it. So I forget how I was asked, but somebody asked nicely, and you kind of go, yeah, why not? So that's lesson one, basic art school. Ask nicely. Th don't be a creep. <laughs> you sort of know when you do it, and you did it. Thank you.